Hello, good evening everybody. So, Tuesday night, 8 p.m., here I am holding space for you so that we can decode everything you want to know, everything you need to know about dating and relationships. As usual, I am bringing you a special topic. Tonight we're gonna to talk about dating safety. There are phonies out there, there are fakes, there are catfishers, there are dysfunctional people who will take you into dark places, sometimes physically, sometimes emotionally. So how do you navigate this world of online dating when there are so many people out there who may hurt you either intentionally or unintentionally? It is, it's not easy, guys, and I know it's not easy. Dating is a scary thing to do because literally what you're doing is you're getting out there and meeting strangers and you're hoping for the best with each and every opportunity. Hi, I'm seeing people popping up. Hello, Ben. Oh, so, oh my God, if I don't have your name right in front of me. Um, write your name, darling, um, just so that I... Um, Sharika, there we go, Sharika. I always know it's beautiful. I always know it starts with an S. It's starting to come more quickly. I love how you are joining me. I love how you are in here with me in the trenches. Uh, in case you didn't know, tonight's topic is about uh, safety and online dating. And I wanna know if you've had a bad experience. I want to know if, uh, you know, there's there's anything that's made you change your behavior, right? Because sometimes we go into online dating in a very naive fashion. Like we, we kind of had this trusting sense that everybody out there is on the same path with the same purpose as we are. And experience can tell us once we start hitting the trolls that not everybody is in the same frame of mind. And sometimes we learn the hard way that we need to be protective when it comes to online dating and we need to be more careful about our information and how we're giving it out and who we're giving it out to. Uh, I'm gonna share a story with you guys. I actually got catfished in the past week. Um, and it's, it may or may not happen the same way for you. And, and I'm telling you guys, you have to be so careful when people are communicating with you. Do not take anything at face value. Do not take anything at face value. So here's the story, here's what happened to me this week. A woman, and I'm gonna air quote this, okay? A woman, because when it comes to online, nobody is who they say they are until they can prove they are who they say they are. And I am, I'm a detective, I'm a huge proponent of, of really digging up information, of, of using my analytical skills to see whether or not people are actually who they say they are. So a woman sent me an email and, and I gotta say, like I went to her profile and it was private, but there's profile pictures, but none of her profile pictures actually had a picture of a person. There were seen pictures and there was only three profile pictures, which when it comes to people, usually we switch up our profile pictures as life changes. So between 2003 and 2019, there were only three profile pictures. Um, so that is suspicious. And, you know, but, you know, that wasn't what made my, my suspicion go up, right? So it's like some people are more private, some people post less, whatever, right? I didn't read too much into that, but I did go look and I, I did kind of go, hmm. So this woman sends me this email, hey, Jody. Uh, she sends this email and it's, it's a story about her son who was at a museum and he was talking to an attractive woman and her son is 21 and, and he commented on her figure and she slapped him in the face. And so this woman wrote me this email, hey, Caroline. This woman wrote me this email telling me this story and said, what do I think of this? And my response, and it was lengthy, my response was pretty much two sentences. And I said, basically women nowadays are starting to speak up about the fact that they would rather be appreciated for their attributes than, or for their qualities, for their character, than for their attributes. And then I get another message from this woman uh, saying that she, chided her son and the son's dad came home and also chided the son and basically sided with the woman who slapped him and said, oh, you know, you learned your lesson, didn't you? 
And I, I didn't really reply much to that. I get another message from her saying, here's a picture of the woman. And it was, you know, basically it was a picture of two people standing beside each other, but one person was cropped out and the woman's face was blurred out and, and you know, very attractive figured woman. And I didn't reply to that. And then I get another message from this person saying, oh, this woman sent an email to her son basically saying, you know, you've, you've made a mistake, you've now gotten punished for it, and I feel that you've learned your lesson, and uh, I'm not going to hold any hard feelings when I see you. And my reply to that was, you know, that's basically what I said, was she did not want to be recognized just for her attributes, but wanted to be complimented on her character if he was going to compliment her. Again, one sentence pretty much, and that was it. I get some more messages from this person. I don't reply to them. I get an email. So these messages were taking place on Facebook. I get an email on my Gmail from the sun. Now, all of this is becoming increasingly suspicious. And as soon as I got an email from the sun, I blocked it. Now, here is why I did not reply much and why I blocked that email and found it highly suspicious. First of all, who does that? Why would the sun be emailing me? Like it's just, it was so out of the ordinary. And guys, if something happens that is out of the ordinary, then be suspicious. Again, be super analytical about what happens. My perception of all of this is somebody wanted to get a reaction. Like first the email about this happened and he said that and she slapped him. There was so many different points in there and it seemed to be seeking my outrage about something. It seemed to be seeking an emotional reaction about something within that first email. And every message that I was getting seemed to be targeted towards trying to create an emotional reaction to what I saw. And the overt sexuality of it, right? She, just the description of the figure and then the picture of the figure and just the constant sort of commentary of the attractiveness of the woman coming from supposedly a woman didn't make any sense to me. And really what I truly believe is this was a man who was penning all of these messages, trying to get me to engage. And you know what a flasher is? You know, the reason why a flasher gets off on showing you their goods by opening their jacket is because they get off on your shock. And so somebody was trying to entice me to display some shock because for them it would be a form of sexual excitement. So be super careful when you're online with the people that you're talking to. Always be suspicious. Always do your homework. Um, and, and just take absolutely everything with a grain of salt. So I want to answer some questions tonight. I want to dive into when you should be giving out your email. I want to hear your stories. Caroline, I'm so glad you're here because when I went on Facebook today and I said, is there anybody who regrets having given out their information to somebody that they met when they were doing online dating? And just about everybody said, yes, I've had a bad experience. Caroline said, not yet. And here's what I, I know about Caroline is she is new. Caroline, I know you are new to coming out into the dating world. This is like you're stepping into this and I'm so glad you're watching tonight because this is going to be an important lesson on caution because not everybody out there is on these online dating sites for the same reason you are. And guys, I wrote this book for you. So Fake Love Need Not Apply, The Single Girl's Guide to Avoiding Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators Online. And let me tell you why I wrote this book. Um, I used to watch Dr. Phil religiously. 
uh, every every weekday I've you know watched every single Dr. Phil episode for the longest longest time and what I started to see as the internet started becoming very prevalent was you know kids coming on with their moms or their dads and saying my parent is getting scammed and they don't understand that the person they are in love with is just some Nigerian scammer taking all of their money or it doesn't have to be Nigeria by the way guys um, every country and in fact a lot of them come from Europe so you know maybe Nigeria is like in the top three but Europe is also in the top three so there are people all over the world sitting behind computers who just will say absolutely anything to get your money and seeing this happen over and over again and and me writing all of my books on dating and relationships anywhere from getting over a breakup to betting for the right partner to dealing with the baggage that you bring into a relationship that you're fighting about it felt that I needed to write a book that also addressed the wrong types and and even though this book is um, about avoiding those predators those losers those scammers online you will come across them in real life as well it doesn't have to be a person somewhere else who you'll never meet sometimes those people are people that you will meet face to face who will be dishonest about who you are because they want what I call the goodies and the goodies it, it depends on who the person is for some people the goodies is pretty much sex and nothing more but for some people the goodies is your money right your assets so whatever it is that they want that you have some people will go to any means to try and get it um, and so I really wanted to highlight who the different types are and guys if you are okay with ebooks I highly suggest you go to my website canadasdatingcoach.com because I give this book away for free in an ebook version. So if you go to my website and you enter your name to be added in to my mailing list, I'm gonna send you a digital copy of Fake Love Need Not Apply because I think everybody should have this book. I think everybody should know the different types that are wrong for them. I think they should know how to recognize them a mile away, which is what I do in that book. I think everybody should know how to not be the sort of person who would fall for that because these types of peoples, the scammers, the predators, the posers, they are predators and they feed on the weak. And one of the things that I do on this book is teach you how to be strong. To te you know, again, you need to recognize them, but then you also need to be strong enough to say, not for me and not fall for it. Um, so let's get talking, you guys. Uh, who here has had a bad experience? Who here has met someone online and thought they were somebody in the beginning and it turns out that they weren't who they said they were? I'd love, love, love to, to kind of dish a little bit on that kind of story. Um, because I want to create awareness, right? I, I want to I want people to understand the facade that some people put up. And let me tell you, it is super, super easy to fall for predators because they are very dynamic. They come across as sweet and kind and generous and patient and having their shit together and this is why I say guys no kissing for three months preach 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 no kissing for three months because people can only hold a facade for so long and people can only wait so long to get the goodies that they want and if you say and you mean it and you do it because guys it doesn't matter what you say what matters is what you do if you do a no kissing for three months rule, I'm telling you, the predators, the losers, the scammers, the liars, they will fall away because they just cannot sustain three months of remembering the lies they're telling you, right? The facade will break. I'm telling you 99.999% of males out there who are looking to deceive you to try and get the goodies, 
won't make it to three months, won't make it to three months. And the one who is left standing is the one who is honest and has integrity and actually really sincerely is loving and kind and patient and does have his shit together. So you may well meet people, you know, and, and guys, oh my God, scammers have the world. They have the best jobs. You know, it's, it's just that their jobs are taking them halfway across the world and they can't get you right now, but they have this beautiful mansion and they have gorgeous cars and they have so much money. And all you need to do is help them out just a little bit, just send them a little bit of money. And that's what they'll do, right? In the beginning, just a little bit of money, just so I can get this paperwork, my visa, so I can buy a plane ticket. Oh, I got, now I'm in the hospital. Like it just, it grows, it grows, it grows until you've given up your life savings. People, Caroline, Caroline, I'm talking to you. Um, if you are online <clears throat> and somebody falls in love with you, Guys, if somebody falls in love with you and they've never met you and they're sending you all these wonderful messages and telling you that you are the love of their life, and if they send you a message that is this long, let me tell you, copy and paste that onto Google and you will see that it comes up as a scammer message because scammers are lazy. I'll tell you that because they're playing a lot of people at the same time, right? It's the same thing as guys who are trolling for sex. Guys who are trolling for sex are not reading bios. They are simply taking this one sentence that's super generic, like, hi, how are you? You look really beautiful. How's your day going? Right? Something that they can just apply to everything. And they just copy and paste it on, on profile after profile after profile, just to see who's going to hug, right? Who's going to take the bait? So one thing you can count on when it comes to most scammers and, and posers um, is laziness, right? So again, the no kissing for three months rule, that's too much work. It's too much work to like try and impress you for three months. If you're, gonna, if you're not gonna fall for it quickly, then you're just too much trouble. And they're gonna move on and try to find that weak person that they can prey on. And when I talk about weakness, it's it really is like insecurity, right? So maybe you've, you've been hurt and you've been cheated on in, in past relationships. Maybe you come from an upbringing where you, you just weren't loved properly. And so you have this, this deep trench inside of you that is just waiting for somebody to fill it up with some kind, loving words and actions. And the moment someone does, it's just whoosh, you are all in. And it's hard to hold back from that because you're just so hungry for it. And somebody's finally giving you a cookie. Um, again, no kissing for three months. That's your insurance policy against falling for that. But I want you to be too strong to fall for these kinds of people, which is also why I promote meditation as part of your dating. Because when you shrink your amygdala, which is your fight or flight, that reduces your stress, fear, and anxiety. And when you're not operating from a place where you're afraid of losing somebody, where you're anxious about being alone, um, you know, where you just feel more solid within yourself. And really, meditation actually is self love. Uh, it increases your hippocampus, which is introspection and compassion. Think about that combination. Introspection, how you think about yourself. Compassion, how you feel about how you think about yourself. You are literally going down a path of self-love. I teach you all of that in Fake Love Me Not Apply. Guys, go get that free copy. Um, uh, so I, I really just want you to be a repellent right to these kinds of guys but with that in mind you you want to have safety measures in place and you want to have that grain of salt in place so how long should you wait before opening up your facebook and i gotta say like you know and i was even thinking about this on the drive up like i have very conflicting ways of approaching this because I want to tell you to be private about your Facebook, but also get you 
to go look at their Facebook and, and, and go see what you can learn about them. It's so important to try and ascertain as much history as you can and compare that to what a person is saying because people are, who are being dishonest will not tell the truth, obviously, about themselves, right? So you might meet somebody online and he says, oh, I don't have kids. And you go, great, what's your Facebook? And he's like, uh, I don't want to tell you my Facebook. And then maybe down the road, you do get his, his full name. You go seek him out on Facebook or he does give you his Facebook handle and you look at it and you see him with a kid over and over again. So it's really about doing the detective work to compare what he's saying to what is showing up. Hey, Rebecca, lovely. Good to see you, Rebecca, life coach from Grand Rapids, Michigan, my, uh, my live partner. Um, guys, if you're on Instagram, you want to go follow her. She posts these really wonderful, inspiring, and very supportive quotes on her Instagram page. And every Monday, we get together and we do a live on Instagram. And then once a month, we get together and we do the No More Assholes free webinar. Um, which is kind of cool because we got like uh, we got some people who are showing interest like more and more people are kind of climbing onto that page which is super cool Rebecca I'm gonna have lots of people to talk to you on November the 5th uh, Nina hello nice to see you Nina um, if you guys have had any kind of interaction that is fishy with someone out in line share it in the comments type that up in there um, because we want to, we want people to start seeing the differences. We want them to start understanding how it looks. Like I had my own catfish story that I told you earlier, which, which came across as somebody who was legitimately asking a question about a scenario, but it was suspicious to me because it was overtly sexual. Um, and it didn't make sense. Like when people write me, you know, for advice, they are writing from their perspective, their experience, their question about what's going on in their life, right? It, it's not like my son complimented a woman's figure and she slapped him in the face. What do you think of that? Why would you even ask me? It doesn't make any sense at all. And then sending me a picture of a woman's figure and, and basically wanting to know if I think it's attractive or isn't, isn't that attractive, right? Like just so suspicious. Um, just the follow-up, the continuous follow-up, the continuous needing to get a response from me, uh, following me from one venue to another when they weren't getting enough attention in one place. They were, they were changing uh, they were, they were changing their identity, right? So weren't getting enough attention as the mother of the child on Facebook. So coming across as the son himself on email, it, it was just, you know, it was, it was so obvious. I'm too smart for that, guys. But, you know, someone else might have fallen for that, right? They might have thought this was actually a woman who was conversing with them. Um, so when have you interacted with somebody only to realize that there was someone else down the road? And, and how do you protect yourself from that? And one of the things that I say, so when I'm teaching people to kind of create more opportunity, like, yes, go online, put up a profile, don't make it too sexy so you're not attracting the trolls, show yourself doing something that you love to do and would love to do with a future partner so that they can see that there's they have something in common with you and they respond to that. Um, but also get out and meet people face to face. And I teach what I call the hit and run flirting technique, which is basically going up to somebody, tapping them on the shoulder, having a short conversation, and then saying, I have to go but here's my contact information and I'd love it if you got a hold of me and we can go out for coffee sometime. And I always say, you might wanna create a new email address for these exchanges. And the reason why I say that is, again, it's a protective measure, right? And, and I sort of, I do want you to, to circle the wagons around you. I do want you to keep people at arm's length in the beginning because I want the person who you let into your space to be somebody who earned that place. Um, so, so 
be protective. Make sure that your Facebook profile is set to private. Go into your privacy settings and set everything to private because I want somebody to find out about you when they've put in the time to find out about you. I want somebody to get your, your phone number, right? And we don't need to give out our phone number anymore because guys, I get emails as quickly as I get a text message. And I mean, is it not the same for you? Would you not say that a text message and an email comes pretty much at the same time? As long as we're wired in somehow, whether it's on data or it's on, on um, oh God, what's the word? How did I forget the word for wireless? Um, anyway, Wi-Fi, right? As long as we're wired in, right? And that's the same thing for getting a text message. You need to be wired in. So set your smartphone to make sure that you're getting notifications for your email. Create a new email account. Um, and then, and only give out that information. Be protective. Uh, so Jody says, I've only gotten catfished by my ex's ex-wife, right? I didn't catch it right away. She was definitely trying to make me say something specific. I was too naive to see it was fake. And later when I looked more thoroughly, I wanted to kick myself. Yeah, and, and I mean, listen, sometimes the people that you meet online are, are catfishing. They, they're just seeking to get you to say something. They're seeking information. They're seeking to get off. They're seeking some kind of of reward, right? Everybody does something because there's a kickback, right? And you need to ascertain what that kickback is. Is it nefarious? Is it somebody who's dishonest, who's looking to take and not looking to give? Or is it actually somebody who's looking to find a relationship and that is their ultimate reward, is finding the right person to start a relationship with? So setting everything to private, making sure, because again, guys, you have to be so careful. You don't know who is going to go a little cuckoo and is going to want to try and track you down. I was talking to the girls here tonight and saying, you know, tonight's topic is about dating safety. And, and there's, there's girls, you know, at the collective here who are eight, 10 years younger than me. And, and they're like, full into this online dating and Tinder and, and their friends are experiencing it too. And people who were using online dating from Tinder to match to plenty of fish, whatever it is, Bumble are using the buddy system. You know, uh, I'm going on a date. This is where I'm going. This is a profile picture of the person I'm meeting. This is when I should get back. If you don't hear from me within a specific time frame, then, you know, <laughs> release the hounds, right? Come looking for me because I'm with a stranger. So there's certainly a level of caution that younger people are exercising. And if you are a new divorcee, you know, and, and you're not so accustomed to online dating and you're coming out into this dating world, I want you to be cautious about it. So create that separate email address that is specific for your date, specific for meeting new people. Put your profiles to private. I swear this is the last time I'm going to say that, guys. And don't meet somebody in a place that is not public. And this kind of falls into another one of those dating rules that I like to give, which is make sure your first date and your, your first, you know, two dates really are walking dates. Don't go for that dinner date right away. Don't go for that coffee date right away. Um, try and get to know somebody when you're in a more natural state of being. And walking is a great way to keep your brain moving forward. Walking in places that are rich in environmental cues, visual cues, gives you different things to talk about. Walking side by side means you're not doing that interview stance, right? Which means that if there are any silences, they're not awkward silences, they're more comfortable, and you can just enjoy each other's company when there are silences. Um, so just 
letting things flow, right? Being protective, being cautious, being careful, and, and making sure that you're getting a copy of this book. Because let me tell you what I do in here. Um, and guys, if you weren't here in the beginning, Fake Love Me Not Apply is um, the single girl's guide to avoiding posers and losers, scammers and predators online. And I give this book away for free on my website, canadasdatingcoach.com, if you're okay with e-readers, so you'll get a digital version. And basically, like what I do in this book is I walk you through the seven steps to getting to love. So the first step is grounding. The second step is clarity. The third step is overcoming fear and then connecting and then discovery and then intimacy and then love, right? So through those steps so that you find your way into love. But what I also do, you know, and like there's like, are you in danger, right? So really um, clarifying, uh, you know, the different types of people that are out there, what they would do, scammers out for your money, um, you know, uh, so scammers out for your money, catfish, guys looking for a sugar mama, uh, guys who are just looking for nookie, losers, predators, um, and I break each one down into, you know, basically how to see them from a mile away. So what is their intent, right? So guys just looking for nookie, what is their intent? And then what they'll take from you, what do they look like? What do they say and do, right? So I really clarify them from beginning to end. How do you weed them out? How to get out if you're already in, right? So those things that I just mentioned, I talk about all of those things for each of the different kinds of guys that are gonna try and suck you in because I want you to fully understand what they look like. I want you to understand also how to get yourself out of that situation if you already find yourself in there. So Caroline says, um, it sounds bad, I know, but I Google all the guys I see for more than one day. Good girl, high-fiving you, that doesn't sound bad, that's super smart. I check all the possible sites and read everything I can find out about them, but when it comes to my sites, I have it locked down so no one can find me unless I friend them first. Love, love, love this, Caroline, um, because really I was talking to you tonight and I'm happy to see that you already have that down pat. Uh, no one's going to get one by you. You're super smart. I'd love to learn how you got to be so smart about online dating, seeing as you, you, as I understand, you're fairly new coming into this. Did you read some articles or did somebody that you talked to have a bad experience? Was there a reason why you got so smart so fast uh, when it comes to dating? Um, give us a little bit of backstory about that. Um, JC, good to see you. From a man's perspective, JC, um, let, I don't I don't know if you're I hope you're still on so um, JC guys if you want to get fit this is this is the the man for you he's gonna show you how to do that he's he he just takes people to a whole other level when it comes to their body and the strength that a body can have um, but if you're still here I'd love to hear about your perspective when it comes to online dating from a man's point of view um, and it's really interesting because I had somebody reach out to me recently who uh, wants to write a book about online dating and he wants me to collaborate with him on it. And he says basically it's going to be like online dating from a man's pers perspective and then you flip it over and it's the woman's perspective. And there's going to be some humor in there. There's going to be some expert advice, you know, from Canada's dating coach. Uh, I think it's a great idea what he's doing. Um, but there really are, and everything I say, has two sides, right? Everything that, even though I speak to women, even though my language is kind of geared towards women, you can take everything I say, you can switch it around because, you know, posers, losers, scammers, predators online, I'm talking to women in that book, but there are also women who are dishonest. There are also women who are takers, not givers. There are also women who are really just looking for money, looking for a sugar daddy, um, even just looking for sex, right? Um, and, and so males need to be just as careful as women do when it comes to this. 
and and really take everything with a grain of salt because half of the men that I saw on Dr. Phil who were who who had their kids sitting across from them going, my parent is in love with somebody who doesn't exist, were males. Um, and so there are women who will use their feminine wiles and their sexuality and their sensuality and convince men who haven't even met them in person that they are in a relationship. And then the payout starts happening. I need some money for this. I want to come see you. I need money for the bus fare. I didn't make it to the bus. I'm in the hospital now. Can you send me some money because I have to pay the bill? This, this often happens in the U.S., by the way. Um, you know, and so listen, guys, if anybody, anybody asks you for money, for anything, it is block, delete, block, delete, because these are definitely scammers. I'm hoping less and less people are falling for this. I'm sure with the, you know, all the exposure that this kind of thing has been given, that there are less people who are falling for it, but under no condition ever should you send somebody money. This is a ruse. It is not true. You are not in a relationship. And, and people, somebody will ask me, what do you think about long distance relationships? And my answer is somebody has to move. Um, and when somebody says how far away is too far, I say you probably shouldn't date somebody who can't take you out for dinner. So never, ever, ever get in a relationship with somebody that you are not meeting and never fall for somebody who will not FaceTime with you. So um, I think last week I was talking about, yes, so last week I was talking about dating and texting, right? And how to not text forever, to really get that face-to-face -face sooner rather than later. And maybe you can't meet up because you're both busy single moms and dads, and it's you know working a job or two, and it's hard to make the time to actually meet in person. Yesterday on Instagram Live at noon, I had a girl who said, I have three jobs and I'm going to school to be a paramedic. How do I date? And so I gave her some advice on that, which is basically, and I know some, some of you watching are really busy people, so here's the advice that I gave her. Create your online profile that speaks to what your life is like. I am, I have three jobs, I am going to school. I am very ambitious, right? Because obviously if you are taking on all of this, you are ambitious and you are hardworking and that is how you phrase yourself. I am ambitious, I am hardworking, I am striving for my future. I am, I am like just chugging along, I am getting stuff done, I am conquering my world. Men, are hard workers and they work a lot and they have little time. I said, you are the perfect match for a good man because he's in the same boat. He is working long hours. He doesn't have a lot of time. And his biggest concern is meeting somebody and her being unhappy with the amount of time that he'd be able to spend with them. So if he reads your profile and sees that you don't have a whole lot of time, he's gonna go, what a perfect match. What a perfect match. Uh, Caroline says, originally I started just to keep my ex outside of our life. So being so private with your Facebook profile, um, it's just worked out to be a bonus now that I'm starting to get out and see what's out there. Yeah. Um, I am happy that you haven't had a bad experience yet. Uh, and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to stay that way for you, Caroline. Uh, so Nina says, yes, catfishers are desperate and try to be smooth at first, and then they try to trap you. Mm -hmm. Yes, no kissing for three months means what pops up at first but cannot be sustained will crack, and you will see through the facade, you will see the truth, and you will be able to extradite yourself from the situation if they don't just fall off the planet first when they realize that you're serious about not kissing for three months and not falling for their crap. Um, I used to talk to a guy online and eventually I caught on to it. When he realized I wasn't stupid, he dropped me like a hot potato. Yes, indeed, yes. When they see that you won't fall for it, they drop you and that is what you want. Part of the stuff that I teach is, is how to let the wrong people go, right? So we, 
we, we fall for the wrong people because we're vulnerable to that, right? But another mistake we do is we hold on to the wrong people because we do have an instinct to pull in what pulls away. Mother Nature made us that way because Mother Nature designed us to understand that there is strength in numbers and that we need to try. We need people around us. And usually the people who fall for scammers and predators are lonely people. Those are the ones who are most targeted, right? So scammers and predators... Um, versus the sexual trolls. Scammers and predators go for divorcees. They go for women who are like 40 plus, whereas the sexual trolls are trolling for the younger women. Um, and, and so uh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, yes, yeah, so letting go of people who are pulling away, right? So we, we kind of, we have this instinct. We have a knee-jerk reaction to pull in what starts to pull away. So one of the things that I teach you in Fake Love Me Not Apply is to let them go, to have the strength and the, and the self-security, right? Because that's what that pulling in is. It's is Mother Nature put a, a signal in our brain that says when somebody leaves us alone, we are not safe anymore. We're not secure. We need numbers in order to be secure. And I want you to recognize that knee-jerk reaction, to overcome that knee-jerk reaction, to let the wrong one go away so you don't pull him back in. Um, Jody says, I just remember I did get scammed. Oh, he got $1,300 out of me. He started pretending he was head over heels, yes, and soon he was saying he needed money for court to keep his kids, right? And we, uh, just they, they go after your empathy. Um, they'll look at what you have in your life. If you, know, if you had a pet and not kids, it would be like my dog needs surgery, right? Um, years later, I tracked him down and asked for my money back, and he laughed and said he didn't remember me, mm, right? Don't you just, ah. karma's gonna get him, love. Karma will get him. We're counting on that. Nina says, the scary part is I caught many trying to add me on Instagram. Interesting. I investigate and catch them based on their grammar, how many photos they post too quickly in a short period. Very good clues. And how they try to privately message me. Delete and blah. Yes, delete, delete, delete. Um, delete. God, I love that delete button. You know, and, and delete is so important when you're online dating. Anybody, anybody who sends you a message that doesn't make it obvious that they have searched your profile, that they've read what you've written, that they're not zeroing in on something that they find you have in common, if it's generic, if it's short, hey, how are you? You look pretty. How's your night? Delete, 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 delete. Do not give an ounce of time to somebody who is not giving you time, right? If he if he's not bothering to invest any more time than it takes to look at a profile picture, goodbye. Sorry, um, you know. And and maybe it's a good man who's doing that, who's just tired of investing so much time writing message after message. Um, but here's the thing: if if that's who you are if you've now reverted to generic messages because you're tired of being um what's the word i'm looking for not dismissed but uh oh, guys help me out here um rejected thank you <laughs> somebody was singing that for me so if you feel like you've you keep writing these messages to women and you're touching on what's in their profile and either they're not replying or they're sending you a no thanks and now you're just reverting back to like hey how are you and and just you know putting that out instead of putting out some time i'm telling you you're going about it the wrong way you will get the person who is looking for somebody not the person who's looking for you. And the stuff that I teach is all about bringing together the people who are specific and intentional about who it is that they're looking for because they wanna make sure the next one they kiss is the right one. And, and so, you know, again, no kissing for three months means you don't fall for a troll, right? And, and think about um, ships that are fishing the ocean by trolling. What that is is this huge net that basically almost hits the bottom of the floor if it doesn't scrape it all together and just cast this great big wide net just to see what it's going to catch, right? That's what trolling is. It's like, I'm not gonna be specific like you would with a fishing line. I'm gonna catch everything and anything and then hope something in there is worth keeping. That is a person who's looking for somebody 
not a person who's looking for you. The person who's looking for you is somebody who's looking for somebody who's similar to them and is clear about what they're looking for in a relationship. And they're not telling themselves, I'm going to know it when I see it. They're telling themselves, I know what I want and I can define it. And when somebody asks me the question, what are you looking for? I can clearly lay it out. And, and the beauty about being so clear about what you're looking for in a relationship is if somebody is in girl or guy mode, which is selfish short-term thinking mode, and you lay out a definition of a man or the woman beside you, which is the generous long-term thinker that you know you want to be with, it gives an opportunity to that person to level up and go from girl or guy mode to man or woman mode to be the person beside you. So Jody says, right now I'm struggling to let the wrong one go. Mm, honey bunny. I broke up with him on Saturday after one month. Too many red flags. I felt empowered when I put my foot down. But when I'm alone, I either doubt myself or get curious about what the real truth was. It's just very difficult for me. I hope you're doing some journaling. Um, it's funny because, you know, when you said, uh, you know, doubt myself or curious about what the real truth was, um, you know what the real truth is, right? When you think about it, you might have said it in a conversation even. Um, and, 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 you know, the red flags, the signs are there. The truth is in the red flags. Uh, you know, I, I, I know from reading your, your posts, and I'm not going to get more into it than you are. Um, but guys, if, if there's, listen, don't date people who are married. Don't, you know, anybody who says, I'm separated. Um, <clears throat> that in itself is kind of a red flag. They have not fully terminated their relationship. And you want to be with somebody who has moved on from their relationship. When somebody says, you know, what do you think about long distance relationships? One of my answers is why put a hurdle from the get go in a relationship with somebody? Why choose somebody? who has a big hurdle from the get-go. And you will find scammers, predators, takers, losers. Very early on, there's this big hurdle. But if you love me as much as I love you, we can overcome this together, right? Isn't that a beautiful story that you should come together and then struggle through this hurdle and come out triumphant on the other side and have everything you've ever dreamed of? Guys, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Look for something that is easier than a large amount of distance, than somebody who is already in a relationship. Um, even if they're saying, I'm completely over that divorce, that's a good question. Why don't you have the divorce? And if they're like, well, you know, the money. Okay, well, then maybe you can't afford a relationship. Well, I haven't gone around to it. Okay, so what you're saying is you're a procrastinator and you're not mature about your life? Like, really delve into that. Um, oh, it would complicate her life. Okay, are you ready for a relationship if you were so still so emotionally attached to your ex that you were bending over backwards like this and, and not really creating a safe space for somebody to have a relationship with you because you have so many complications with this other person. So you need to take the red flags as red flags. And, and guys, no kissing for three months, right? So, you know, Jody dated somebody for one month and is struggling to let them go. Why? Because the chemicals released during those kisses created a bonding within you because Mother Nature made you that way. She made the kiss create chemicals that make you lean into somebody fully. It makes you think you know everything you need to know, even if you don't. And that is why it's difficult to let somebody go after one month. Whereas if you had not been kissing and all these red flags come up and then you're like, you know what, maybe this is, a, not maybe, this is not for me. Without a doubt, this is not for me. This will not be healthy for my mental health, for my emotional health, for myself, for my family, for my life. 
this is not the person for me because there's too many complications and red flags that come with this person. I'm going to shut it down. Guys, if you haven't been kissing, it's not a breakup. It's a conversation. And it's so much easier to say goodbye, to let them go, to, to have an uncomplicated releasing of this person because you don't feel so emotionally attached. And I, I want you to think about what happens when you are sexual like like when you're kissing it creates that chemical with the with the, the lip chemicals that combine creates an aphrodisiac right this is why kissing precedes sex and and it also has a second you know function in the female brain telling her she knows everything she needs to know even if she doesn't even if this person is still a stranger and it leans her in taking her to the next level with him like pretty much immediately and then she becomes sexual. And when you think about sex, when you think about what's happening in the vagina, guys, when a woman has a baby and the baby travels through the birth canal, her body releases a ton of oxytocin. This is what makes her forget how much it hurt when the baby comes out, which is why women will have a baby through natural childbirth a second time like you would think if a woman did that once she would never do it again but there are women who have natural childbirth and have since the beginning of time and then did it again why because oxytocin made her forget how much it hurt right it doesn't just make you feel warm and fuzzy it makes you forgetful and so going back to the vagina and what happens within the vagina the penis moving in the vagina is also releasing more oxytocin than what would happen if there was just physical touch, right? So your oxytocin level goes up. So now you're, you're feeling even more love. Like why do you think you feel more in love with somebody after having had sex? Even say if you, if you like, you know, you meet them and, and you spend a few days together, you have a few dates, you have some kisses, and then, you know, another few days and you have sex. You know, if you think about your emotional level from the day you met to the day you kiss to the day you had sex, is it not just going up, 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 you know, so much from one to the other? Like it's, it's crazy what happens. Guys, I don't know who's at that door because that is not my door, just in case you're wondering. Uh, so, you know, I'd, I'd love, I, you know, love to hear when you guys start using this no kissing for three months rule love to hear your experience with it i love to hear um about the train wrecks that you averted i get messages from people who use this rule i know jody i saw your little <laughs> tell me about your experience using this rule tell me about the ones that walked away tell me about your relief when that happened i want to hear those stories um so Jody replying to Sharika, men and women react to the same chemical differently. Yes, uh, yeah, so Sharika was asking, um, so why don't they bond, why don't men bond from the kisses? Um, I know, not fair. <laughs> so here's, let me explain that. So when you think about uh, men and women, right? So look at how we look on the outside, very different, right? Mother Nature also designed us differently on the inside. We don't just appear different, we physically are different biologically. You know, even our brain structure is different. The way our thought patterns happen is different. Men will process 5,000, 7,000 words a day. Women process 20,000 words a day. Like there are so many differences. And one of those, yes, is a woman will bond more from kissing than a man will. And here's the reason why. Women are the incubators. So that baby incubates within our body. And if you take us back to caveman days when it was more dangerous and we needed to be ultra careful with ourselves and our health and our environment and our safety, because if we didn't keep ourselves safe, then we died. And if we died, then we didn't make babies. And if we died when we made a baby, then the baby didn't survive, right? So Mother Nature made females to be very selective when it comes to choosing a mate, which is why she shuts down our fertility cycle. So think about your period, right? You're, you're not fertile all the time. And the reason why Mother Nature did that, like, <laughs> think about it. There's no reason to to not to not just always be able to fertilize an egg, 
right? There's no reason for that, really. Like, why wouldn't we just always have eggs in our uterus and, and the sperm would come and it would pop into one? And so any time of the month, we would be fertile. We could make a baby, right? Men are like that. Any time of the month, men can pop their load in us and that sperm can go in. And if the egg is there at the right time, if we get to within those few days, right? it'll make a baby. So why did she shut down our fertility cycle? To make us less horny than men, right? So she made a seed planter. She made an eager part of the puzzle. That's why we're different, right? We're puzzle pieces. We're not made to be identical. We're meant to be puzzle pieces and fit together so we make a greater whole, a bigger piece, and be stronger that way than if we were just like this, right? So she made men eager. She turned their fertility cycle on 24 seven. So they plant that seed all the time. So they want to, right? This is why I don't demonize men for looking for sex at every opportunity they can, if that's what they're doing, because mother nature made them that way, right? It's just, I'm getting you to look for the ones who have impulse control by using a no kissing for three months rule. You're going to exercise impulse control and you're going to look for people who exercise impulse control and you're going to find the people who are mature enough to find the right partner and kiss the right one instead of kissing people and hoping it's going to work out. Um, but she shuts down your fertility cycle because she made you the smartest. Don't say that too loud. But really, when it comes to mate selection, men are just as smart as women. It's just they don't fall for the chemical reaction the way women do, right? So she made you fall for the chemical reaction so that it bonds you and it creates that I want to make a baby process. Whereas with men, she just made them seed planters so that they are ready at all times when women are ready, okay? Um... So guys, we are getting close to, what do we have here? Um, okay, um, so we're getting close to nine o'clock. I like to hold this to about an hour. Um, I'm gonna open this, like see, now, I don't know if you guys have any questions. Um, you know, very often sometimes you come with questions and then I'm just, I'm just talking so much and saying so many things that uh, I managed to answer your questions anyway. Um, if after I log off, you have any questions about this or you're watching the replay, you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to post them. Guys, I'm always available for you. I'm always here for you. Uh, do make sure you're heading over to CanadasDatingCoach.com and getting that free book, Fake Love Me Not Apply, because I do want you to learn what it takes to find the right partner, to get in the right relationship, to have the love that you're looking for. This is important to me because I believe in karma and I know that what you create, what you pick up is just gonna spread out and eventually those loving vibes are gonna come and hit me. I get some every day and I love, love, love it. Um, also, I have another speed dating event coming up November 16. Uh, we had seven matches from the last speed dating event, which is incredible. So do sign up for this next speed dating event. Um, I'm going to log off now. I love you guys. And as usual, I will see you soon.